Hello and welcome to a new video on the subject of microscopy. I'll be covering in detail in a separate video the working principle details of the component parts along with other important aspects of a compound bright field light microscope. But for now, I thought I should make a short and practical oriented last minute checklist kind of video on how to quickly set up a compound monocular bright field light microscope for specimen viewing and study. You can also check out my video on how to use a compound binocular light microscope by clicking on the link given in the top right corner of the screen or the link in the description below. So here we go. To begin with, here's a quick pictorial overview of the different component parts of a typical monocular compound bright field light microscope that you'd normally come across in a high school and even in a college level biology lab setting. Once you remove the microscope from its box, bring it to the working table by holding it with both hands, one hand firmly holding the arm of the microscope and the other hand supporting the base of the microscope, like so. Safely position the microscope on the table such that the arm is towards the user and that the base of the microscope is at least 3 inches away from the edge of the working table. If natural sunlight is to be used for specimen viewing, the microscope should be placed in a location that has sufficient access to bright or diffuse light, but not direct sunlight. Somewhere close to a window is preferable in most instances. If an external artificial source of light such as a table lamp is to be used, or the microscope comes with an inbuilt light source such as LED or halogen lamps, then location of placement doesn't matter much as long as the light source is positioned correctly. Now, Holding the arm of the microscope firmly with one hand and pressing the base firmly with the other, gently incline the body of the microscope to the extent where it becomes most comfortable for the user to look through the eyepiece without causing strain to the neck and shoulders. The microscope can be conveniently used in this inclined position if the specimen is going to be a dry permanent slide preparation. However, for temporary slide preparations where the specimen is mounted in a liquid base, the microscope needs to be kept in an upright position, or at least with minimal inclination to avoid the specimen and the cover glass slipping off from the slide during examination. Once the microscope is correctly positioned, the first thing you need to do is to check the eyepiece or ocular for dust and dirt. For this, remove the eyepiece from its position and check both the upper and lower lenses for dust and dirt. If present, use a lens cloth or lens paper to wipe it clean. Reinsert the eyepiece into the ocular tube once cleaned. Clean the external or front lenses of the objectives as well with lens paper or lens cloth. Now, position a low power objective lens, either the 4x or the 10x lens, in line with the eyepiece. To do this, rotate the nose piece until one of the low power objective lenses clicks into position and aligns itself with the body tube. Wipe the specimen stage with lint-free tissue or cloth to remove dust and debris. If the microscope comes with a condenser, check the iris diaphragm. Make sure it's at least partially open. If fully closed, adjust the aperture using the diaphragm adjuster that sticks out from the condenser body. Also make sure the condenser lenses are free from dust and dirt. Next, cover one eye with your hand and with the other eye, look into the eyepiece. Then adjust the mirror sideways and up and down and also adjust the aperture of the iris diaphragm until the circular field of view is uniformly illuminated throughout but not excessively bright. If the microscope has an inbuilt condenser, then use the plain side of the mirror for natural daylight and the concave side for artificial light source. If the microscope doesn't have a condenser apparatus, then always use the concave surface of the mirror to reflect light. If artificial light source is used, adjust the intensity of the lamp or position the external lamp such that the circular field of view is uniformly illuminated but not uncomfortably bright. The microscope is now ready to be used. For specimen viewing, first rotate the course adjustment knob in order to bring the objective lens to its highest or farthest possible distance from the stage. 
Now, place the prepared slide containing the specimen of interest onto the stage. If the stage is of a simple construction with two spring clips, simply slide the glass slide from the terminal ends of the clips like so. If it's a mechanical stage setup, pull the spring-loaded slide clip away from the center like so, and then place the slide securely in the slide compartment. Bring the slide clip back in position, which now firmly holds the slide. Now center the specimen by adjusting the slide sideways and up and down until the specimen is located roughly in the center of the hole in the stage. Once you have centered the specimen, slowly and carefully lower the objective lens using the coarse adjustment knob until it almost touches the surface of the slide or the cover glass. Now, look into the eyepiece again and check the lighting distribution in the circular field of view a second time. If the illuminated light is not uniform, readjust the mirror position and the condenser aperture again until the lighting is uniform throughout the field of view. Then carefully rotate the coarse adjustment knob counterclockwise until the specimen becomes visible and is more or less in focus. Once the specimen comes into view, use only the fine adjustment knob to bring the specimen into sharp focus by rotating the fine adjustment knob clockwise or counterclockwise. The height of the condenser in some microscope models can also be adjusted. The closer the condenser is to the stage, the more critically focused the light is on the specimen, while the farther away the condenser is positioned from the stage, the more diffuse the light becomes and therefore the more darker the image is. Correct adjustment of the aperture of the iris diaphragm can also greatly enhance contrast in specimens. Contrast is inversely proportional to the amount of light passing through the condenser and thereby through the specimen. So the narrower the aperture, the higher the contrast, and darker the image will be, while the more the opening of the condenser, the lesser the contrast, but brighter and more cloudy will be the image. In addition to the quality of the objective lenses, Optical adjustments of the condenser height, iris diaphragm aperture, and the amount of reflected light as a whole is key to producing great quality image views. It takes time, patience, and practice, but with experience one eventually gets the hang of it. Modern microscopes also come fitted with a blue filter underneath or above the iris diaphragm. The main advantage of a blue filter is that, irrespective of the color of the light source, the blue filter will render it colorless and give a clear white background in the field of view. This is both soothing to the eyes and also doesn't mask the true color of the specimen. Once you're done bringing the specimen image into focus under the low power objective, scan the specimen for the specific region of interest that you would like to observe and study further by again adjusting the slide carefully and slowly sideways or up and down. Once you've locked onto the region of interest, change the objective lens to the high power, which is usually 40 or 45x by rotating the nose piece until the high power objective lens clicks into position aligning with the body tube. Use only the fine adjustment knob to bring the image into clear focus. As the focusing distance for high power objective lenses is barely within a millimeter region, using the coarse adjustment knob with high power objective lenses can result in accidental overshooting of the lens by ramming it into the slide surface resulting in breakage of the lens and or the slide. To prevent this mishap, many modern high power objectives are manufactured with a spring mechanism fitted for the front lens. These spring-loaded objective lenses help prevent accidental breakage by retracting the front lens to a certain degree into the body of the objective when the user happens to overshoot the lens against the glass light. Having said that, it is always better to be careful and follow good practice when using high power objectives by using only the fine adjustment knob with such objectives. Once the specimen is focused under high power, you might need to readjust the lighting in order to attain the ideal brightness and uniformity along with maximum contrast and resolution. More advanced bright field microscope models come with a power focal design feature whereby the image once focused under the low power will remain in focus under high power lenses as well without the need for refocusing. Now coming to the usage of the highest power objective in a bright field microscope, also known as a 100x immersion lens. There are certain fields in biology where minute details or extremely tiny objects such as bacteria need to be examined. 
This is where the immersion lens comes as a great add-on advantage in microscopy. The most commonly known and widely used high-power immersion lens is the 100x oil immersion lens. One drawback of using the immersion lens, however, is that only dead specimens that have been permanently fixed on the slide can be observed with good clarity. In order to use the oil immersion objective lens, lift the body tube of the microscope fairly high up using the coarse adjustment knob. Then rotate the nose piece until the 100x immersion lens aligns with the body tube and clicks into position. Place the permanent specimen slide onto the stage and center the specimen. Now place a drop of high refractive index immersion oil recommended by the microscope manufacturer to be used with their immersion objective. Then carefully lower the objective lens until the external lens touches the oil surface on the slide. Now view through the eyepiece and focus the specimen using only the fine adjustment knob. Again, you might need to readjust the lighting for maximum contrast and ideal brightness. Oil immersion objectives require a more intense light source for satisfactory results. Inbuilt artificial light source such as halogen or LED lamp is therefore mostly used when working with immersion objectives. Once you're done examining the slide, lift the objective to a fairly high point using the coarse adjustment knob. Wipe the residual oil off of the objective lens using a clean and dry piece of lens cloth or lens paper. Also wipe the oil off from the slide using a cotton ball dipped in acetone. Do not use harsh chemicals such as organic solvents for cleaning microscope lenses you may, however, use ethanol or isopropyl alcohol of 70 to 90% concentration for cleaning. Once you're finished using the microscope, clean the lenses, the stage, and the body with lens cloth. Lower the body tube to minimum and keep the nose piece in neutral position, that is, without clicking any objective in position in alignment with the body tube. Finally, Either cover it with the microscope cover or put it back into its designated box. So this is all about the use of a compound monocular bright field microscope. If you found this video helpful, do show your support for what I'm doing by considering subscribing to my channel and turning on notifications to stay tuned for more such content. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.